Hello and a very warm welcome back to the garden. Now today's video is all about polycultures which are similar to intercropping and polyculture is a fantastic way to maximise productivity in a small space. So if you only have a small garden then this is an excellent technique to use. Now I felt it would be best to invite Vera Hrötink to teach us about polycultures and all of the fun and creativity we can have with them. And I've learned so much about polycultures from her YouTube channel, which you should definitely check out and subscribe after watching this video. She's also a permaculturalist, of course, and a writer, author of Edible Paradise. And if you're looking for a book about permaculture growing and sustainable growing, then this is a wonderful addition to your bookshelf. So here's Vera to teach us about polyculture. Thank you for the introduction to you and welcome to our garden. We have a quarter acre plot about a thousand square meters which has been designed according to permaculture principles. Most of it is actually planted as a food forest that means that we have a combination of fruit and nut trees with a lot of fruiting bushes and a very diverse herb layer. I consider diversity one of the core values in permaculture design and also an insurance against failure. Though most of the plants in the herb layer, uh, planted in the herb layer are either edible or medicinal, they often have other functions as well. For example, tansy here is a plant that attracts beneficial insects, but uh, it's also a nutrient accumulator and we can use it as mulch. We have lupin, which is a nitrogen fixer, and we have lots of plants that attract pollinators and other beneficial insects such as hoverflies or parasitic wasps. But in today's video I want to show you how we encourage diversity in the kitchen garden while we grow our annual vegetables. Of course a small kitchen garden like this is already very diverse because there are many crops in a relatively small area but you can take it a step further and combine different crops within a single bed and another favorite way of mine to encourage diversity is to let uh, some beneficial plants self-sow. For example, here, this is our potato bed. You can see there is a dill here and calendula, both of which uh, are self-sown and uh, both of which attract beneficial insects. But you can take it even further and start growing polycultures. Polyculture, of course, is the opposite of monoculture and it means combining many different crops together, mixing things up. There are many benefits to this. Uh, one of the main ones is that a lot of uh, pests and diseases are specialized either in a, plant, in a certain plant or plant family. And if you mix things up, there are likely to be fewer problems with both disease and pests. Another benefit is that you can get a better, larger overall yield, yield from a certain area. Uh, and also it will be a more diverse yield and I think this is especially valuable for people who have very little space to grow and of course it was also the idea behind your book uh, Veg in one bed. Over the years I have designed many different polycultures. The most productive one was probably my uh, sown polyculture, small scale polyculture that you can sow all at once and um, in our climate around mid-April and because of the combination of crops, you will be able to harvest from it from 21 days after sowing until deep in winter. Uh, the polyculture combines fast growing leaves like lettuce and mustard greens with uh, a bit slower growing crops like carrots, beets, chard, onions, uh, parsley, and also fall and winter crops such as radicchio and parsnips. But I think that polycultures are, all, are also an opportunity to be creative and have a bit of fun with the design. And I have sometimes designed polycultures around the cuisine of a certain country or even around a specific dish. One of my favorite examples in this category is my Mexican polyculture, which was all about the veggies and uh, herbs and flowers that come from Central America. Uh, there was corn and beans and tomatillos and zinnias and uh, anise hyssop and it not only was it um, very diverse and gave us a lot of different produce to harvest but it also looked very cheerful and colorful. Today I'm about to plant a new polyculture and I wanted to show you how I go about the process, planting process. 
Uh, this time I had fun, a bit of fun with color and I chose veggies in the colors of red, orange and yellow. Um, there are already a few things in the bed. Uh, we have a row of beans on the north end. Our beds run on the axis of uh, south north so I tend to put the tall crops on the north side so that they do not shade the rest. And there are also a few self sown things like I told you. I have calendula over here. There's some dill, there's verbascum, um, there's coriander. All plants that attract beneficial insects. So I will leave these in place and I will plant around them. The, there are a few uh, tall plants that will go on this side, like these sunflowers and the variety is called peach passion. And I have a few tomatoes, two of the variety Dora, Dorada, Dorada, it's, it's a German variety, so they would probably uh, pronounce it differently. Uh, it's a yellow fruited cocktail tomato and I have one plant of um, cocktail crush, which is a red cherry, a uh, red cocktail tomato. And the reason I chose those is because they have some resistance to, uh, to potato blight. I also have a few broccoli plants and I have plants from the beet family, two kinds of chard, yellow and red, and some uh, multi-sown uh, yellow, burpees gold, golden. Um, these are normal beets. I have red zinnias. I have two kinds of lettuce, crisp mint, which is the green one and outrageous with red tinted leaves. And I have marigold here, which is called lemonade and it has yellow flowers. So I'll start planting and then I'll show you the end result. I started with planting the sunflowers at the north end of the bed. Then I planted the three tomatoes plants in a sort of zigzag form. And now I'm into planting them with the broccoli plants. And there's a reason for that. Broccoli as brassica is very susceptible to various pests. And one of the ways to protect them is to mask their smell with a strong smell of another plant. And of course, tomatoes have quite a strong smell. So this should help a bit. But of course, there will be more plants in the polyculture that will help as well. For example, I have the marigolds, which are quite a strong scent, which I will plant all around these. And another way the brassica will be protected is that there will be calendula and other plants like the coriander and dill, which attract beneficial insects, such as parasitic wasps or hoverflies. Uh, and the parasitic wasps in particular, they lay their eggs in caterpillars. So that's another way to protect brassicas. So that's the polyculture planted. I can't wait to see how it will turn out later in the season. Thanks so much, Hugh, for having me on your channel. I hope this video was inspiring and we'll come back in a few months for maybe a harvest video from the polyculture. Happy gardening! Thank you so much for that Vera and I think polyculture is a wonderful thing that every single gardener should use and I love the idea of being able to be creative and also the idea of having themed polyculture plantings. So one polyculture planting that I might be testing out later on this year is a winter vegetable polyculture. But my question to you, uh, the audience, those of you watching this video, is what themed polyculture would you grow? Would it be a Mediterranean one? Would it be a salad one? Have a think and let me know. There are two other things that I love about polyculture growing. The first one is by growing lots of different plants together 
it's a natural form of pest prevention because it confuses the pests and also because I think it looks very aesthetically beautiful because it looks very natural and organic so if you're after that kind of aesthetic in your garden then polyculture is a great thing to do. So thank you once again Vera uh, for your contribution and teaching us about polyculture and make sure you check out her channel uh, and also her book, The Edible Paradise. One of my favourite videos that Vera has done, it was quite a recent one actually, was about 10 perennial vegetables to harvest in spring. So if you want to see one of her videos, this is the one that I recommend you start with and it might give you a few ideas for what to grow to start harvesting in the Hungry Gap next year, which is very useful. Goodbye.